Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. This is Kashif Kamran and a very warm welcome to the advanced audit and assurance Q&A session for exams in September 2021. Now, if you have any questions you would like to ask for your exams in September 21, this is an opportunity for you to ask as many questions as possible and I will be giving you the answers to each and every of your questions. Now, we know the September 21 exams for advanced audit and assurance are psychologically 12 days away from now. So this is a very crucial time for all of you as you sit down to prepare yourself for exams in September 21. Now, what you should be doing in these 12 days and what should be the agenda of the 12 days? Are you missing on something? Uh, have you forgot something? Uh, have you missed something very important? Uh, what should be the focus in these last 12 days ahead of your exams? Now, this session uh, will be really insightful, not just answering your Q and A's, but more importantly, giving you all the tips and techniques you need to know for the advanced audit and assurance paper. So if you have any queries and you want to ask anything from uh, the tutor, this is your opportunity. Go ahead and ask any questions you, you would like to ask. Now, we know the AAA exams are just 12 days away. So these are nervous times. Uh, these are very stressful times for all of you. Uh, and I hope you are preparing yourself in a very effective manner for your upcoming exams in September 21. So uh, I am waiting for your Q&As to come in so I can start responding to your question and answer session when exams are just 12 days away. Now, just to give you an idea, in the meantime, you start raising the questions. It is very, very important that all of you have an idea of the new article, uh, which is risk and the understanding of the entity. I have already covered this article on my YouTube channel, and I hope you've, you have uh, watched the video on this new article, risk and understanding the entity. If you have failed so, you can go to my YouTube channel. You can see the hyperlink on your screen. You can go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Kashif Kamran. You will find uh, almost a one hour video on the new article risk and understanding the entity and how you should go about preparing it for your AAA exams. Now, how this new article will impact your AAA exams have already been covered in that YouTube video. So please ensure you have knowledge of this new article risk and understanding the entity as you're preparing yourself for exams in September 21. So this is something very, very important. And I'll keep giving you some very important tips throughout my session today. But again, for, for at least the next five minutes, I just want to uh, put this message on my screen, the new article, risk and understanding the entity. So everyone gets this and everyone prepares this article in a very wonderful manner. Now, there are some questions popping in. So let's start to find the answer between them. There is a first question coming from Jane. She's asking, hi, sir. What is the difference between UK and the international AAA paper? And can we still use your study materials? Uh, the AAA paper for the international stream, Jane, and for the UK stream is uh, almost the same. But there are some extra chapter uh, or some extra chapters in the UK variant, which is not in the international variant. If I can remember rightly, I think there's a, uh, there is a chapter on liquidation and solvency. And there is something about the auditor role in the liquidation process and the solvency process, uh, which is in the UK stream paper and which is not in the international stream paper. So there is like one or two more chapters you have in the UK stream, which is not in the international stream. But uh, to, uh, to a majority extent, yes, you can use the study material of the international stream when you're preparing yourself for the UK stream paper in terms of the the core syllabus areas like risk, ethics, evidence, so on and so forth. OK, there is another question coming from Grace uh, asking, may I know if if the question comes out with analytical procedure or ratio, how do we know exactly 
what ratio and how many ratios we need to calculate in the question number one grace that's very simple i have already covered this in my previous webinars whether it is the june webinar or the september webinar and you need to calculate five ratios in the question number one if the examiner is asking for so five is a definite number and that is something you have to know beforehand now which five ratios examiner says you need to study the examiner answers of the recent papers to know which ratios the examiner is calculating now ideally it depends upon the uh, financial data uh, which is being made available to you as a student so grace if you have the income statement uh, from the income statement you can find the operating profit margin or the gross profit margin uh, you can find the interest cover uh, you can find the effective tax rate now, these are three very important ratios if you have the financial data for the three to be calculated from the balance sheet you can work on the gearing ratio you can work on the current ratio if you have the data available you can work on the inventory holding period and you can also work upon the receivable collection period so it all depends upon the amount of data you have been given by the examiner to calculate the ratio i hope you're clear with your query uh, grace Okay, there is another question coming from Shagun Goyal. Uh, he's asking, I want to know if I have written all the risk in the answer based upon the requirement, but didn't prioritize it because uh, it didn't prioritize it based upon significant risk. So many marks will be deducted. Uh, so may, any marks will be deducted? No. See, uh, Shagun, if you wrote the risk from the case study, uh, but the question was asking evaluate the significant risk or evaluate the significant audit risk but you wrote the risk from the case study you calculated materialities you uh, you found the accounting treatments you found the risk of under and overstatement everything was case linked but you failed to prioritize them or you failed to bring, bring them in the order of putting the risk with the highest materiality first then second then third then fourth no there is no deduction of marks so don't uh, be in a panic that marks will be deducted. But yes, that is part of a journal professionalism that when the examiner is asking you to explain or evaluate the significant risk, you should prioritize the risk from the most important to the least important. Okay, there is another question coming from Rabia. She's asking, can you please confirm if marking scheme for the matter to consider question in section B is still four and a half or change? No. Uh, Rabia, it has changed. You have one mark for commenting on the materiality. You have one mark for the commenting on the accounting treatment and you have mar one mark for commenting on the risk. So it's three marks, just like the marking scheme for risk of material misstatement in the question number one. OK, there is another question, uh, a very long one from Sebastian asking, hi, sir. Uh, you did mention we should prioritize the risk when question one is asking for significant risk. Uh, at the upper end of the spectrum okay that's wonderful that you use that terminology uh, sebastian and we need to prioritize based upon the materiality level and start with profitability agree just wondering if the materiality of assets example eight percent is higher than the materiality on revenue example four percent which is considered more significant should we come first writing in the answer see sebastian uh, start with profitability as the first vector uh, so I would suggest 4% of the revenue will be more important than 8% of the asset if it is a listed company, right? If it is a very capital intensive industry or a manufacturing industry, then 8% of the assets could be important. But if the question says XYZ is a listed company, then the priority has to come first on the profitability and every aspect which is material to the PNL. Then you come to the balance sheet. I, I hope. I've been able to answer your question. OK, there is another question from uh, Rohit asking, sir, could you please explain the difference between a procedure and an additional information? Rohit, uh, I, I have given clarity on that a number of times, but just to make it more clear, a procedure starts with an action. So if, if I say review the lease agreement, see, I'm starting with a action review. Or if I say discuss with management, I'm starting with an action discuss or if I say recalculate the amortization expense. So I'm I'm starting with an action recalculate. So when you write a procedure, a procedure has to start with an action verb 
and you need to have a purpose so action plus a purpose and that's how you formulate a procedure now when you're writing an additional information in the additional information your focus is on the information now information is something tangible and information is like a document so if i'm writing information so i'll i'll, I'll simply say lease agreement because lease agreement is the information to confirm and i write the reason or i'll i'll say fix asset register to confirm and i write the reason so i'll start with a document followed by a reason and that is how you write an additional information so information starts with a document so you focus on a document and you write the reason after no need to write any action verb before it i hope you're clear on that uh rohit okay there is another question a long one from alim asking sir could you please elaborate the part section d1 e by giving an example uh, that is evaluate the result of planning and risk assessment procedures to be determined in relevant audit strategy including auditor response see uh, alim we need to understand you need to visit the past papers uh, we have seen questions on audit strategy in the question number one uh, of the september 2018 exam so look at the question number one of september 18 exams there was a 10 marks requirement asking you to evaluate the audit strategy and i think there was a question in the march 20 exams the so question number one where the examiner asked you to evaluate the audit strategy so there are, there have been two instances where the examiner has asked you to evaluate the audit strategy so that's what the examiner is expecting from you from the syllabus area d1e uh, in terms of auditor responses uh, that is the audit procedures the examiner asked for in the question number one you must have seen that in question number one the examiner asked for audit procedures on something so that audit procedure on something is basically the audit uh, responses the terminology used in syllabus area d1e i hope you're clear on that alim okay there is a question from hosai she's asking hi sir if we are unable to prioritize risk when writing the answer uh, we can highlight the most significant risk in the conclusion uh, we can do that that's wonderful hosai uh, rather this is wonderful for all of you to listen to this question of hosai she's saying if we forgot to prioritize the risk the question was asking evaluate the significant risk but when we are writing the conclusion at least in the conclusion we can prioritize them or at least in the conclusion we can highlight the more important one in concluding the briefing note so that's wonderful hosai you should go with that strategy that's that's wonderful okay there is a question from uh, azan asking sir what exam paper should i practice uh, azan 12 days away from exams you should ideally practice papers from september 18 to june 21 you should not be looking for any other paper september 18 to june 21 that should be the definition of the past papers okay there is another question from uh shagun asking uh, the capping for marks for materiality are three earlier it was five am i correct yes um, in the recent exams we have seen that the examiner have capped the materiality marks to three now in the question number one when the question comes on audit risk or risk of material misstatement so the capping of marks for materiality uh, sh shagun is now three you're right absolutely right okay uh, there was another question uh, which i just uh, overlooked while i was answering the other questions so just let me come to that there was a question from uh, katherine morris she's asking hi sir for question number one i'm struggling to know what to write for the conclusion which webinar do you recommend for the assistance in this see uh get right it's so simple you need, need not to have any webinar here uh, when you're writing a conclusion of a briefing note uh, conclusion means that you sum up the more important uh, aspects you have found while you were writing the answer for part a part b part c part d how long the conclusion should be the conclusion should not be more than three sentences long again i'm repeating it should not be more than three sentences long so in like three sentences you're just wrapping up uh, some of the key risk you picked up or you're just wrapping up some of uh, some of the key ethical issues you picked up or some of the key problems you picked up uh, there might be a requirement asking for ethical issues in question number one there might be a requirement asking for 
procedures in the question number one. Procedures cannot be concluded. You can conclude upon risk. Uh, you can conclude upon ethics. Uh, you can conclude upon any other issue like uh, you are accepting a new audit client, something like that in the question number one. So it's not necessarily you're concluding on every requirement, A, B, C, D. You are concluding primarily on the requirement of risk or like a requirement on ethics that what was the major finding which you got after answering the question in just like three sentences. I, I hope you're clear on that, Catherine Morris. Okay, there was another question uh, which needs a quick answer as well. I've already made clear the materiality marks are capped up to three. So number of students are asking that. So I hope you get the answers as clear as possible. Okay, there is a question coming from Waris Ali. Sir, if so change, uh, if no change, it's depreciation method from straight line to net book value, will it be change of an estimate or a change in accounting policy? See, the change in depreciation policy is a change in accounting estimate. I hope you're clear on that, Waris. Okay, <clears throat> Rohit, uh, sir, what are the matters that will come in OMP uh, other than the change of auditor? For, for the exam paper, only the change of auditor, Rohit, so nothing to worry about. Okay, another question from Yosef. Uh, I want to ask you, sir, can I do in any order the CB exams? Example, I start with three first, two, and fun. Yes, absolutely. You can do paper in any order. Then examiner, uh, examiner do mention that the students which starts with the strongest question first uh, pass the paper so if you can start the paper in any order you can start with section b first come to section a after but please ensure you're doing everything in our time management uh, within the time management okay another question coming from uh, biswas she's asking sir how to write procedures for a forensic accounting see biswas uh, you need to know the rules of procedure, which have been taught, which is the procedures have to be case specific. It should start with an action. It should have a source. It should have a purpose. No matter on what topic, which topic you're writing a procedure on. So you need to find the information given in the case study about uh, anything relating to forensic accounting, like inventory. You find the information about inventory in the case study, and then you see, okay, what sort of procedures you can make on inventory uh, in terms of the information given to you. So you start thinking about the actions that should you discuss something? Should you review something? Should you analyze something? It's just like making simple procedures, but on the information given to you in the case study. So you should not forget that mnemonic CASP case specific action source purpose. That's make that makes a wonderful procedure. I, I hope you're clear on that Viswas. Okay, there's another question from Niaz asking, sir, for question on practice management uh, on a non-audit engagement, uh, is it exactly one mark per meta or is it uh, two marks uh, as it has been seen on one to two marks in the past paper? Yes, when you are accepting Niaz, uh, a, an engagement from an existing client, so that is worth one mark. If you are accepting an engagement from a new client, then that is worth two marks. Even if you are accepting a new client, if you're accepting a new audit client, then you get two marks per meta. When you are accepting an engagement from an existing client, then one mark. And if you are accepting an engagement that too from a new client, then again, two marks. So I hope you're clear on that, Nias. Okay. <clears throat> Now, in the meantime, uh, before I move on to the other Q&A sessions, one last question from Shagun, then I need to guide you some tips for your exams in September 21 and then take more Q&A sessions from all of you. Shagun is asking, sir, what is the responsibility of the auditor regarding a wrong chairman statement made by him as as like the June 21 exam? See, uh, Shagun, the auditor responsibility is very simple. If the chairman statement has a, has a material inconsistency or the chairman statement is inconsistent with something in the financial statement, then the first responsibility of the auditor is to discuss with the chairman the amendment or the correction needed in the chairman statement. And you should uh, emphasize to the chairman 
that the the problem in the chairman statement and the need to correct the problem uh, in terms of presenting a clear view or in terms of presenting a true view to the shareholder so that is your first responsibility as an auditor secondly if the chairman still refuses uh, to make any amendment to the chairman statement then you should highlight the material inconsistency in the other information paragraph for the attention of the shareholder so that is broadly your responsibility uh, your first responsibility is to read the chairman statement then if you find a material inconsistency you should discuss that with the chairman if the chairman fails to resolve it then you will include that in the other information paragraph <laughs> Okay, now just before I see more questions coming from your side, and I hope you're getting good responses to your question, just want to share some quick information with all of you. Uh, there was an article uh, which I covered in the June 21 webinar because it, it was published for the June 21 exams, proposed changes in code. I hope you've seen this article. Uh, in the June 21 exam sitting, this article was the new article, but this is still an important article for your exam, September 21. Don't uh, undermine this article if you have not read this article you have not watched my june 21 webinar you have not watched my youtube video on the proposed changes in code which i covered for the june 21 student please you still have 12 days proposed changes in code which was an article published before the june 21 exams and the new article published just a week ago risk and the understanding of the entity and these are two very important articles uh, which you should not ignore and the good thing is i have already put a video on risk and understanding the entity i've already put a video on the proposed changes in code uh, on my youtube channel you can see the hyperlink on your screen youtube.com slash kashif kamran it's like one hour session on risk and understanding the entity and a one hour session on proposed changes in code. Please don't miss these two articles. And if you are missing something out from this Facebook live session, you can watch this session again uh, once it gets onto my Facebook page after the live session ends. So you can watch it as many times as possible just to capture any critical information you have missed out. Another very important thing. You should read five exam technique articles. I always recommend them. You know there are five exam techniques article written on risk, uh, ethics, procedure, reporting, and accounting issues. You cannot deny the importance and the significance of the exam technique articles. They really guide you how you write a good answer. Now, instead of failing the AAA paper or instead of um, getting under examiner criticism later. It is very, very important that you read the exam technique article because that is the only way you can write a good answer and you can meet the expectations of the examiner. So in the last 12 days, you should polish up the five exam technique articles, which is very, very important. You should also read the latest three examiner reports i'm again repeating you should read the latest three examiner reports because examiner reports will tell you the do's and don'ts you should read three examiner reports in the last 12 days that's not difficult because in the examiner report you will come across a statement stronger student you will come across a statement weaker student so you need to be very careful about weaker student that what a weaker student did and you would you would not like to repeat that in your exam. So three examiner reports in the last 12 days. Weaker student try to underline every statement of the examiner but the examiner is saying weaker student because you don't don't want to be part of the weaker student. So read the three latest examiner reports read the five exam technique articles. Read the article proposed changes in the code, which was part of the June 21 exams and read the new article risk and understanding the entity. And these two articles are already covered on my YouTube channel, which is in front of your screen. Now, just before I move on with further tips and techniques, there is a greater interest of student in this Facebook live session. Already more comments have come in. So let's see what are the queries from the students. Now, another query uh, which has come in 
Okay, uh, Waris, if you're talking about the exposure draft, which is about the proposed code, uh, which came for June 21 exams, that is still valid and will be valid for, for at least two to three. So the proposed changes, the exposure draft on the proposed changes in code is still a valid article for the September 21 exams. Examiner might give you a certain number of marks even in September 21 exams from that. Okay, there is a question from Nadu. Uh, when we write audit risk, for example, where there were two accounting issues, such as a wrong accounting treatment of the intangible assets uh, as PPE uh, and on the depreciation being understated, can we write this as two audit risk and could gain separate marks? See, you will write it as one accumulative risk, the part of the PPE, Nadu, and the part of the depreciation. But the you will get extra marks for it. You will get um, two marks for every risk you are writing. So if you are writing a risk relating to the PPE and you're writing the risk relating to the depreciation being understated, so you can fetch maximum four marks from here. And if a risk involves a materiality, then you can fetch maximum five marks from here. For one risk, three marks. For another risk, two marks. So if one situation give rise to multiple risk, then the maximum number of marks you can fetch from one situation is five marks okay there is another question again from hosai asking sir but the inconsistency will not impact the auditor opinion yes the inconsistency will never impact the auditor opinion because the auditor opinion is on the financial statement not on other information even if material as the auditor report do not include other information please correct me yes if there is a inconsistency material inconsistency right uh, in the chairman report and that is not rectified. So that will be included in the other information paragraph. And even if the chairman corrects the inconsistency, then even you will tell in the other information paragraph as the auditor that there is nothing to report. So other information paragraph is a static paragraph of the audit report, but other information does not impact on the opinion of the auditor, Hosai. Okay, the next question, Rohit, sir, could you suggest questions on quality control issues that affects the audit plan and perform? See, Rohit, uh, September 18 to June 21. Uh, any questions should be practiced. I think September 18 consists of a couple of questions on uh, quality control. Uh, and there are questions on quality control even in the June 21 exams and even in the March 20 exams. So I think March 20, June 21, September 18, had three good exam settings where we had very good questions on uh, quality control. I think you should practice uh, them uh, ahead of your exams in September. Okay, then another question from Azan. How many days before the exam should we read articles? I think at least uh, if you if you are delaying reading articles, at least read them three, four days before the exams, not, not later than that. At least three to four days before you should read the articles. Okay. Another question from uh, Nea, sir, is the article on data analytics still examinable? Yes, it is still a recent article. Uh, you cannot undermine the importance of data analytics too. Data analytics is among the recent articles which is published under one year. So uh, can data analytics be asked again? Yes, so you cannot just undermine the importance, but currently risk and understanding the entity is important. And currently, the exposure draft is very, very important. Okay, there is another question. Then I'm going, moving to some very important tips uh, for all of you, uh, including the recent changes in the exam paper. And what should you expect from those recent changes coming in the September 21 exam paper? But just let me take some more questions from other students. Again, another question uh, from Sebastian asking, sir, do we mention uh, that the examiner can ask definition question in relation to the new technical articles. Yes, examiner has a tendency of asking definitions for from the new articles. So uh, you have to read them. Examiner can ask for definitions from the new articles, right? So do we need to write exactly the same? No, you need to rephrase. So if the examiner asks you to define something, uh, you have to put that in your own words. Uh, so you cannot just have a rote learning of the definition, but you should have a central idea of the definition. 
Okay, there is a question coming from Bilal. Sir, can you please explain the difference between other meta and other information paragraph? There is some confusion. See, Bilal, other meta paragraph come for a change of auditor. So if there is a change of auditor, then you insert in the audit report another meta paragraph because the other meta paragraph is a paragraph which will be inserted in the audit report if there is a change of auditor. So this paragraph, if inserted, will make the report modified. So your report will become modified report. Other information paragraph is a static paragraph of the audit report because this paragraph relates with the auditor responsibility and the management responsibility for the changes for the other information in the document containing the financial statement. So the responsibility of the management and the auditor with regards to the other information is contained in the paragraph. And if the auditor has found a material inconsistency in the other information, or if the auditor has not found a material inconsistency in other information, you will tell shareholder that you have found it and you will tell shareholder that you have found nothing. So that is the subject matter of the other information paragraph. There is a question from Joyce asking, sir, uh, is there a big possibility for this session to come out with analytical procedure on a risk question? Uh, honestly, to me, I think yes. Because considering the changes around data analytics, considering uh, examiner might bring a different looking uh, financial picture in front of the students, just like I mentioned in my September 21 webinar, that examiner might give you a dashboard uh, where you have been provided with results of analytical procedure and from the results of the analytical procedure, you need to comment on the risk. So I think the dashboard picture, just like I mentioned in the September 21 webinar, in that likelihood uh, and the changes in the syllabus area D2, which was mentioned in my September 21 webinar, in light of that, there is a big possibility of a question uh, on audit risk or risk of material misstatement with analytical procedure for September 21 exams. But again, this is just an assumption which might be right, which might be wrong. OK, uh, there is another question from. Uh, <clears throat> Salman asking, what will you remind us to be aware of the other assignments as they weren't came recently? I think uh, Salman, it's difficult to predict considering there are four exam papers and then ACCA sets different exam papers for center based exams and remotely invigilated exams. So uh, the spotting of the question beca has become extremely difficult. But uh, if you look at audit of performance information as an other assignment, uh, it has come uh, very less times. And uh, uh, if, if you if you expect the unexpected, if you expect the unexpected, then in that case, uh, audit of performance information is, is a very key uh, topic which can come in upcoming papers. But again, you know, the review of prospective financial information has been the most favorite of the examiner. The examiner puts the review of prospective financial information almost after every two to three exam settings. So that's, that's like one of the examiner favorite. So it's difficult to spot, but yes, you can man you can look at the trend and pick some of the important ones. OK, there's another uh, question from uh, Jane asking, sir, should we put a definition for everything we write, for example, a standard or a threat to independence? Uh, even if they don't ask for definitions, do we get marks? No, not at all, Jane. You are a manager in the AAA paper. So being a manager in the AAA paper, you're not putting definitions of anything unless asked for. If the examiner is not asking for, please refrain. Suppose you give definition of an audit risk or you give definition of a self-review threat or you give definition of a self-interest threat. No, you just need to relate that. You need to apply that to the context of the case study. So you're not giving definitions at all in the AAA paper. OK, now just before I come to a few of the other questions uh, from the students, uh, Shagun, what should be the strategy for the last 12 days? I will just be coming on that in the next couple of minutes because that's part of the agenda. And Rohit, uh, do we look into preconditions of audit in matters to consider from a new audit client, but we are, if you are asked to provide the non audit services? No, no, not at all, Rohit. You just consider the client screening and the client integrity, not not the preconditions of the audit uh, because they are only relevant for accepting a new audit client, not an engagement from an existing client. I hope you're clear on that, Rohit. Now, just before I take on more Q and A's from your side, 
um, I've taken plenty of them and responded to plenty of them. If I've missed any one of them, please put your question back again in the chat box so I can just have a focus on that. But just for five minutes, listen to the exam strategy. So we've already covered the, re, uh, the need to read the five exam technique articles, uh, reading the three examiner reports, reading um, the re recent articles, so on and so forth. This is very important. Review marking scheme of three latest exam papers. Now you should have a habit of reading the marking guide, which is part of the published answers. So if you download the published answer of the June 21 exams and you go to the marking guide at the end of the answer, see what is a marking guide for a procedure? What is a marking guide for audit risk? What is a marking guide for a business risk? Uh, what is a marking guide for reporting, etc. Then download the other recent paper like the December 20 paper and see what is the marking guide in the December 20 paper. When you are looking at the marking guide, just focus on the latest three paper for marking guide. Don't go to the older papers. So the marking guide change slightly after a certain number of exam settings. So if you just be just carefully evaluate the three latest papers, three latest answers, sorry, published answers, you will get the correct definition of the marking scheme. OK, the next. Uh, you should follow my recent two practice to pass sessions, March 21 and June 21, apart from the September 21, which was done for September 21 exams. So September 21 is a must write. But apart from September 21, you should watch the two recent ones, the March 21 and the June 21 alongside. I hope you have all taken the recent webinar, the September 21. So these are recommendable websites. Now, something very, very important. Time management. Now, I believe this is one of the very frequently asked question. Uh, I always give student a very simple uh, formula. Uh, three hours and 15 minutes. So three hours and 15 minutes means 195 minutes, which includes the reading and planning time and which includes the writing time. So in total, you have 195 minutes and you have a 100 marks paper. So divide 195 with 100. So that means you're getting 1.95 minutes per mark. 1.95 minutes per mark. Now, if you are attempting a 50 marks question, multiply that by 1.95, you get the total time available. If you are attempting a 25 marks question, multiply that by 1.95 and you get the total time. But the total time you will get by divide by multiplying the marks with 1.95, that total time includes the reading and planning time and the writing time. Suppose a 50 marks question, you multiply that by 1.95. So it's almost comes like to 98 minutes. That is the total time for the question number one, 98 minutes. Now in 98 minutes, one fourth of the time is reading and planning. Three fourth of the time is writing. So 98 minutes, one fourth of the 98 minutes is approximately 24 minutes. So out of the 98 minutes, 24 minutes will be spent on reading and planning and 76 minutes will be spent on writing the answer. So look at the total number of marks multiply that by 1.95 and you get the total time in the total time one fourth is the time you have for reading and planning and three fourth is the time you have for writing if you fit within this definition you can do a wonderful answer one fourth time spent on planning really increases the prospects of you passing the AAA paper in the first exam setting and really increase the prospect that whatever you are writing is quality. If you're not spending good, uh, good amount of time on reading and planning, you are increasing your failure in the AAA paper. So time management has been reinforced many times by me in my previous webinars, even on my Facebook page and even in my live Facebook sessions. Please stick to that. Now, before I come to the functionalities of the computer-based exams and more important tips for 
September 21 exams. Again, there is a load of questions uh, which needs to be answered. So back to the Q&A session. OK, there is a question from Andrea asking procedure is equal to action plus source plus purpose. Evidence is equal to working papers plus source plus purpose. Perfect, Andrea. That's a perfect formula. Keep it up. OK, there is another question from Rabia. Ideal typing speed. Oh, that this is a wonderful question, Rabia. I was expecting this question in this session today. I was just reading a document by uh, ACCA on the typing speed. Uh, and in that document, it was written that ACCA do not want you to be a fast typist. They're not testing your speed. They're testing the quality of your answer. If you write fast, if you type fast, uh, in the latest examiner reports of many papers, not just AAA, examiner was very, very bothered about spelling and grammar mistakes and plenty of them on a computer-based exams because examiner thought that the student wrote way too fast. And when they were writing way too fast, or typing way too fast, sorry, they were making lots and lots and lots of spelling and grammar mistake. We know spelling and grammars are not penalized in, in the ACC exams, but too much, which distract the assessor or the marker from reading the sentence really spoils your number of marks you're getting in one question. So spelling and grammars, a lot of them is a big issue. Yes, some of them uh, like three, four, like seven, eight across a hundred marks paper. That's quite fine. But you do a spelling mistake on every line. You do three spelling mistakes in one single line. That becomes a big problem. And that was criticized by the recent examiner reports of many strategic level papers. So typing.com is a recommendable uh, website, which ACC recommends for you to build up the typing speed. So you can go to the typing.com and uh, do some tutorials on typing and you can get a very good typing speed. And the more you write the answers on a practice platform and the more you write the answers on the blank workspace, Rabia, you will have a very good typing speed. So there is no ideal time. There is no ideal typing speed informed by ACCA because it varies from a student to student. And ACCA is not testing your typing speed. ACCA is testing the quality of your answer. I hope you're clear on that, Rabia, and all of you. OK, in between, there is another question coming in. Just let me get them from the order where I left with. OK, there's a question from uh, Spectre Chaudhary, if that's your right name. Uh, any specific accounting standards we should focus on? See, question spotting, standard spotting is so difficult. Yes, we know uh, there are very frequently asked accounting standards like IS 37, IS 36, IS 38. These are like frequently examined. We know IFRS 2 comes a lot. Uh, IS-20, government grant, comes a lot. Uh, we know uh, IFRS-3, uh, business combination, comes a lot. IFRS-15 comes a lot. So these are like frequently examined standards where you should have a good focus. OK. <clears throat> Ratesh asking, uh, I have been confused in audit evidence and audit procedure. Uh, are they both the same while writing the answer? No. Uh, Technically, there is a thin line between the way you write a procedure and the way you write an evidence. Uh, but while you are writing a procedure and you mistakenly write an evidence, and while you are writing an evidence, you mistakenly write a procedure, examiner will not penalize you too harshly for that. But you should know the right fundamentals. Suppose you're writing five procedures, and while you were writing five procedures, you wrote mistakenly two evidences and three procedures. Examiner will not penalize you for that. Examiner will still give you marks. You were writing five evidences and mistakenly you write three procedures and two evidences. Examiner will not penalize you for that. So the procedure starts with an action like review, discuss, analyze, recalculate. You start a procedure with a action. When you're writing an evidence, evidence is the working paper of the auditor. So evidence you start with copy of notes of results of something like that. So you mostly say a copy of something, results of something, or notes of something. That's, that's how you start writing the, the evidence, uh, Ritesh. OK, there is another question from um, 
Nadil Rahman asking how many days before the exam we need to complete seven papers from September 18. It depends upon you because every student will be flexible. I, I cannot give you a good definition how many days before. Ideally, I, I believe as a tutor that at least uh, the last 24 hours before you enter the exam scenario, your paper is on sixth. So I believe fifth, fifth is a day when you sit back and relax. Uh, if you ask me as a tutor, and if you ask, if you, if I share my experience with you when I was doing ACCA, I used not to study 24 hours before the actual exam day. 24 hours before the exam day, you need to relax. You need to uh, cool down your mind. You need to uh, relax your mind so that you bring out the best on the day of exam. I, I, I've seen students studying till the very last moment. That is psychologically not good. OK, uh, there is another question from Jane asking in your June 21 P2P videos, you recommended doing a table of calculation. Do you still recommend this method? Uh, yes, I still I still because whatever I've discussed in June 21 webinar, Jane is still valid for September 21 exams. OK, uh, Rohit asking an interesting question. So will the CBE platform on the day of exam underline the spelling mistakes in red like in the MS Word? No, 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 not at all. Uh, uh, if you do the spelling mistakes, it will not be highlighted the way they're highlighted in the MS Word. But you, you automatically get to know that you made a spelling mistake because when you're typing, you psychologically know you're writing a wrong spelling. OK, there is another question from uh, Nick, Nick Kunch asking, Sir, in terms of planning, you said one fourth of the time. Uh, so first we need to read all the exhibits and plan the answer for each A, B, C, D requirement during the 26 minutes and then start writing the answer. Absolutely correct, Nikunch. So first you read all the exhibits. So you first read the requirements, right? And after you read the requirements, you know what you need to do in A, B, C, D. Now knowing that you start reading exhibit one, two, three, four, five and you start gathering information, you start annotating information or you start copying the information into your word processor so that after 26 minutes, you can start formulate a very good answer. OK, there is another question coming from Alam. Sir, do you think that it is a good idea to revise my written questions after finishing it? Would it be wise to spend two third minutes on that? Uh, if you have time in exam, then do it that when you write an answer, or at least where you believe you wrote a bit average answer and you have time, you can just prove read in like a minute and two just to see if that makes sense. But I think you don't have that much time to do this practice uh, on a very effective basis in a triple exam because time is too less and to write is too much. OK. Question from Salman. Can you please give me a short note on the agricultural standard? Uh, Salman, I try my best if I can share something out on that in the WhatsApp group, the, the, the September 21 WhatsApp group, or any student can help you out with that. But uh, I'm not just uh, putting a concrete promise over here. OK, there is another question from Andrea asking, sir, have you got any video or, on a good summary of all the IAS and IFRS? See, uh, Andrea, uh, the, on the YouTube, uh, there is a website the, on the YouTube. Sorry, there is a channel uh, C P D box. I'm again reading C C for cat P uh, P for a parrot C P D uh, D for um, D for Denmark, right? C P D box B O X C B D box. Uh, and on this channel, you have good summaries of accounting standards. OK, another long question from Nea. Sir, in the June 21 exams, you said that the quality control issues to provide an overall conclusion at the last regarding the effect of the quality. So is linking the matter with ISA 220 to be ignored or just a conclusion would provide uh, just a conclusion is the safe side, right? Uh, if you're not commenting on quality and para by para, because you do need not to forcefully comment on that para by para Neas. So if you give an overall conclusion, even that is better if you're not commenting on individual issues. If you're commenting on individual issues, don't forcefully comment. Don't forcefully comment. Not necessarily every issue gets down connected with quality. So at least giving a conclusion 
is the uh, life saver for you in exams. Okay, another question uh, from Jane. She's saying, not a question, but I want to say thank you for all your times and resources. Thank you so very much, Jane. The session has been organized for all of you, all, all the Triple students. Thank you. Shagun, again, another question. If question includes dashboard, uh, then we have to do the same like previous, make the table of calculations. See, uh, if, if you get a dashboard, most likely the results will be given, like gross profit margin will be calculated, like the percentage increase in sales will be given. So you just need to pick in that uh, if the gross profit margin is given, what risk is the gross profit margin indicating? So if you see the gross profit margin given to you and that's rising so what is the risk in the rising gross profit margin or if the sales revenue is rising and the percentage of the rise is given what is the risk underneath that rising trend so dashboard i believe will contain results already given to you and you need just to comment on those results uh, and identify the associated risk so you need to use the results in a more clever way shagun Okay, another question from um, Specta. Sir, can we copy paste the actual text from the case study and then expand upon it? Not, not the full text. Not the full text. Uh, examiner was so unhappy with the June uh, with the uh, June twenty one exams recently that the student copied large chunk of text. Not happy at all. You can copy a key word. Suppose you're reading a paragraph and you came across a word impairment of a factory and you think impairment of a factory is a key word you just copy the impairment of a factory and paste it on your word processor or the response option you can copy words uh, just to keep in mind uh, the purpose of copying it and later you can expand upon it but you cannot copy sentences or you cannot copy chunk of text that's not allowed okay what is sir is that is is that true answers will be auto saved yes answers will be auto saved so if you're writing an answer and you press cross and the window closed down the answer is saved right answers are automatically saved right okay salman god bless you sir sorry for my impatient two days ago i i was the guy on the whatsapp okay i didn't remember that because there are so many whatsapp messages salman honestly that they come in and they go out so even if i don't uh, keep a watch on my WhatsApp messages for even one hour. Uh, hundreds of messages goes down and hundred of messages comes up. So it's, it's just so difficult, right? So thank you for that. Okay. Few of the last steps before you come across with more questions in, in this session. Um, CBE functionalities. Uh, I just want to have a quick five minutes over here because uh, by now you must have used uh, the practice platform, right? And by now, you must have done ample of practice on the platform, uh, which is the AAA platform for computer-based exams. And you must have got the right exam rigor, what you will be doing on the day of exam. Now, I believe when you look at a, when you look at a practice platform, you have flexibility. And every student will be different how you use the functionalities on the practice platform. Now, if you, if I use the practice platform, if Mr. A use the practice platform, if Mr. B use the practice platform, Mr. C use the practice platform, all four of us will use the same practice platform, but in a different manner. We are using the same practice platform, but in a different manner. I might, I might not use the on-screen calculator and I use my own calculator on the table. Mr. A, uses the on-screen calculator because he's more comfortable with that. I might not use a scratch pad and I might do the rough working in the response option and later delete my rough working and I don't open the scratch pad at all. Mr. C uh, is very fond of using the scratch pad and he uses scratch pad for all the rough workings. Now see these, these are flexibilities. Uh, one person copy paste, the other person don't. Uh, one person, when he's writing a heading, uh, make the heading bold or underline. The other person don't make the heading bold or underline. So you need to decide what's best for you. Opening multiple windows on workspace. Now, if you ask me, I just keep two windows at a time. One window of the response option and one window of the exhibit. Uh, 
So there are so many students I've seen, they keep four windows at a time and they're still very comfortable. Uh, if you can uh, move the window up and down, you can reduce the size of the window, make a window small, uh, move the window on the left hand side, on the right hand side, and you're fine with it, then you're fine with it. Now, if you ask me, I, I feel very scared looking at so many windows open up on my workspace. Even if I'm using my laptop, I feel scared looking at so many tabs open on my uh, laptop even. So if I'm working, I just need to have focused windows in front of me. So there is a flexibility element. How many windows you keep up, you use the calculator, you don't use the calculator, you use the control B, control I, control U, the italic underlined board, you use the copy paste, you use the calculator, you don't use the calculator, you use the scratch pad, you don't use the scratch pad. So I think you need to find what's the best definition for you. And by now, 12 days away from the exam, I hope all of you have found the very good definition of using the functionalities of the practice platform. You must have identified what's good for you and what's bad for you. And you will stick to that on your actual exam even. I hope you're all clear on that. The computer-based exams and the use of functionalities. We've already covered the time management. So knowing the paper. You know there is uh, two sections in the paper, right? Section A and Section B. Now, we even know that there are two syllabus areas. Again, repeating, there are two syllabus areas. Number one, syllabus area D. And number two, syllabus area E. This is must part of the 100 marks paper. Syllabus area D we know comes in the question number one. And syllabus area E, which is completion and reporting, is in one of the two questions you have in section B. So syllabus area D and E are the two strong pillars of the syllabus. Now the rest of the syllabus, syllabus area A, syllabus area B, syllabus area C, syllabus area F, they can come anywhere in the paper. In one exam sitting, you might not even find syllabus area F. In another, you might find it. In one exam sitting, you might not even find a syllabus area A. In the other, you might find it. But syllabus area D and E is like critical components of your paper in section A and section B. Ethical, professional, and quality control issues is a very, very important area. You know that it's like next to impossible that you find uh, exam settings without this topic. If you're not getting quality control issues, you will get ethical and professional issues. If you're not getting ethical issues, you will get professional and quality control issues. So that's very, very important. Procedures. Finding an exam setting without procedures is like next to impossible. In the question number one, you have procedures. And I think in the last many exam settings, almost in every single exam setting, we found we found procedures. So you cannot be bad on procedure. You cannot be bad on ethical, professional, and quality control issues. You cannot be bad on the syllabus area D. You cannot be bad on the syllabus area E because these are focal areas. Evidence, in some exam settings, you get a question on evidence. In some, you don't. Uh, other assignments, in some, you do get them. In some, you don't. So you need to know the paper by no now. You should know uh, how is the paper structured? How is the paper developed? And the paper is so organized. The paper is so structured. But you need to find which syllabus areas contributes heavily to your AAA 100 marks paper. And then the four professional marks for the briefing note should not be missed out. You should try to get four out of four on a briefing note because that is one very good hope you will surpass 50. Now, towards the last few things and what to do in the last 12 days before I take on that, let's take some of the, some of the other questions which are coming in. So before we take a strategy, what to do in the last 12 days. Okay, so we are into a Q&A session for Advanced Audit and Assurance. I'm Kashif Kamran, and we're just moving into the last of the few questions for the session. <clears throat> okay. Sir, uh, okay, there is a question from Rohit. Let me put that on screen. Sir, does the CBE practice platform shows a CBE platform in actual shows us the remaining time? Uh, yes, I hope someone can correct that. 
because as per the feedback I got from the students who have actually been into the exam centers, uh, the answer to this question, Rohit, is yes. Okay. Another question, because some are technical questions which only ACC can answer. I cannot answer them because I'm not into the technical side. I'm only into the a AAA side, right? So are there laptops available in the examination centers of PC? Uh, I think PC, not laptops, PC. And if there is an electricity issue there, our answers are saved. Yes, answers are automatically saved. They are spontaneous. They are instantly saved. So there is no risk of your data gets lost if electricity goes off, right? Okay, then another question from Spectre Chaudhary asking if we use spreadsheet for the calculations, do we need to put references to the working in our text answer? Yes. If you're doing working, if you're doing calculations in the spreadsheet, then after every calculation, write working one, working two. So when you're writing the answer on the word file, uh, Spectre Chaudhary, then you can say with reference to the working one in the spreadsheet or with reference to the working two in the spreadsheet. So you can cross refer. That's a good way of writing answer. I think I guided upon that in my June 21 webinar day one or day two somewhere. Okay, another uh, question from Nabil. Yes, there will be the time remaining on the top of screen. So Nabil, Nadil is sorry confirming that. So you will have the time remaining element coming on the screen. Okay. <clears throat> Muhammad Talha, sir, shall we go for attempting full papers or shall we focus on the quality of the answer? Full paper or shall we focus on the quality of the answer? Yes, you should go with the aim of completing the 100% paper. If 5 to 10 marks are left, that's quite normal. That's quite normal. So if you come out with your 90% paper completed, Muhammad Talha, you have done a big achievement. 90% is a very, very good achievement. So I think you should aim at maximizing the paper, yet not compromising the quality. It should not be that you're rushing on it and you, your answer gets down inferior. But it should not be the case that you, you say, okay, I'll do two questions with best quality and I'll leave one. No, that's very bad. Okay, another question from, from um, Shagun again. Uh, loads of questions. Okay, uh, si <laughs> finally saying no for the question, sir. You are doing a superb job by making AAA paper very easy for all the students. Thank you once again. Oh, I, I thought, uh, Shagun, that you had a question. So thank you very much and wish you success in your upcoming exams. Okay. Spectre. Sir, for remote exams, can we use multiple screens? Yes, yes, yes. Obviously, on the workspace, right? On the workspace, can you open multiple, uh, multiple windows? You're asking for that or you're asking for the multiple screens? Uh, if you're asking for multiple screens and that is a technical query, Spectre Chaudhary, uh, you should be raising that to your ACCA local office for clarity. Okay, so, okay, we have more questions. That's good. We have another question from Pama. She's asking, sir, what's the difference between engagement partner, EQCR, and a key audit partner? Uh, see, uh, the engagement partner is the one, uh, Perna, sorry, I pronounced your name wrongly. Uh, Perna engagement partner is the one who signs the audit report and mostly is the key audit partner. The EQCR is the partner who is an independent partner and who performs an engagement quality control review. So EQCR is an independent partner. He's not connected with the engagement and the key audit partners and the engagement partner is the same terminology. Yusuf asking, can we copy paste uh, any text of the exams uh, without using any functionality, uh, exam text without using any functionalities? No, see, you have to copy paste using the shortcut keys, control C and control V, but not, not a lot of copy paste. Yes, uh, Chaudhary, for multiple screens, you need to contact the ACCA local office from whichever country you're from. Okay, another question, long one from Shantel Andrews asking, sir, implications on the audit report is issue scale impact. Is the impact a modification? Impact, not necessarily, is a modification. Impact on the audit report can be anything. The impact on the audit report can be an opinion. The impact on the audit report can be a paragraph. The impact on the audit report can be a key audit meta. The impact on the audit report can be emphasis of a meta paragraph. The impact on the audit report can be MURGC. So impact is not necessarily an opinion. Impact would be anything in the context of the case study. Uh, I know modifications can be positive or negative. Okay, that's wonderful. The positive is a para, negative is something that will impact the opinion, just clarifying. Yes, you're perfectly right in your mindset, uh, Chantal. Another question from Nadil. Okay, just let me have a, a sip of a tea just to clear my throat off. 
it's been long. I, I'm going with your Q&As now. Uh, Nadeel was asking, uh, is it important to study ISA uh, and its definition? You had not recommended to study it in your webinars, but the examiner answered, oh, okay, fine. I got your answer. Question, sorry. See, using the name and using the number of the accounting standard or the auditing standard, examiner says there is no credit for that. First of all, Nadeel, you need to understand the examiner answers is a tutorial guidance. Whatever examiner has done in the answer, you cannot do that. And if you're just alone focusing on the examiner answers, you're not reading the exam technique articles, which is written by the same examiner, and you're not reading the examiner reports, which is written by the same examiner, you are looking at half the picture and you might not be preparing yourself well because examiner writes the answer, examiner writes the technique articles, an examiner writes the examiner reports and the same examiner in the exam technique article part three available on the SEC website as the third article on the website exam technique article part three accounting issues uh, at the end of the article you can see examiner has given an exam focus and in the exam focus examiner has written there is no marks for the name and the number of the accounting or the auditing standards so Refrain from that. Okay. That is it. So let me move on towards my last aspect. A big question. Uh, what to do in last 12 days from now? That's a big question. <clears throat> now, there is no one definition. There is no one answer to this question. Today, on the 26th of August, when you have exams on the 6th of September, every student needs to sit down, take a paper and do his or her self appraisal. And on a paper, you should conclude that as of today, as of the 26th of August, where you are standing in terms of your AAA preparation. Now, every student will have a different stage of preparation by now. Some must have completed and have entered the phase of revision. Some are still going over the syllabus. Some might not even have started yet because I just a day before yesterday, I got a WhatsApp message and the student was asking me, sir, I couldn't prepare for AAA. I booked for AAA. I just have 14 days. Is it possible to do it? Now you get strange questions like such. So there might be a student who has just started to study. So you need to find where you are. But some of the important things, irrespective where you are, you should be doing. Again, I'm repeating them one by one for all of you. Number one, on my YouTube channel, I have uploaded uh, the updation uh, on the new article, which is risk and understanding the entity that's number one in the last 12 days number two the article again on my youtube channel the exposure draft which is a proposed changes in code which came for the june 21 exams is still valid for september 21 exams so this is an important article two number next must read five exam techniques article in the last 12 days if you have still not touch upon them read latest three examiner reports for finding the criticism for finding what the weaker student do in exam review the marking scheme of the latest three papers and ensure that you have found the best way of using the computer based exam practice platform functionalities with which you are comfortable with now listen to this very carefully in my September 21 webinar, day one and day two, perhaps, I did inform you about the syllabus changes. And there are three syllabus changes, right? One is the syllabus change uh, D1 in the syllabus area D1. One is the change in the syllabus area D2. And one is the change in the syllabus area G2. Now, G2 is a current issue. And we know the rule of thumb for AAA is very simple. 
that unless and until examining team will not write an article on a current issue, it will not get examined. So leave aside the syllabus area G2 and the changes in the G2 for the time being when you're preparing yourself for exams in September 21. So G2, put it aside. Now there are two changes left. D1, syllabus area D1 and syllabus area D2. Will they have impact? Definitely. Because syllabus area D is what comes in question number one. And question number one is set on the syllabus area D. So changes in syllabus area D1 and D2 can have a definite impact starting from September 21 exams. You might be lucky if examiner doesn't touch upon the changes in D1 and D2 and the load gets to the students in December then. But I believe there will be some impact of the changes in D1 and D2. Now the, the changes in the D1 is where the examining team has now written an article and the article is the one I, I have been recommending since the start of the session, this one. This article has been written risk and understanding the entity in line with the changes in the syllabus area D1. An examiner might start to use from the September 21 exams in the question number one, the evaluate significant audit risk. So that word significant can start to come in your paper. Or the examiner can say, evaluate the significant risk of material misstatement if you've watched my YouTube session. So that is one change of terminology. Or the examiner might use the term spectrum of inherent risk. You should be familiar with this jargon from the new article. Examiner might say upper end of the spectrum. Examiner might even ask you in the first exam setting, uh, explain the definition of the spectrum of inherent risk or explain the factors uh, which um, which which helps the auditor judge where an inherent risk sits on the spectrum. I've just covered them down just in the last 24 hours on my YouTube channel. So the syllabus area D1, the terminologies will change. Examiner can use the terminology significant risk. Examiner might use the terminology spectrum of inherent risk. Examiner might ask you definitions of the recent changes around spectrum of inherent risk in the upcoming exams. So please be watchful of the uh, session I did on YouTube, number one, and the article. D2. D2 is about data analytics. D2 is about how the results will be presented to you in the upcoming exams. Now we know examiner used to present you the financial statements in the question number one, right? And you used to have a last year column and you used to have the current year column. So you have two columns, right? Uh, of the financial statements given to you in the question number one. And you used to find the percentage changes, increase and decrease, or you used to find the ratios uh, in that data for finding risk. Now, the examiner might change the way the financial data is presented to you in line with the syllabus changes D2 and the results, the financial results might be presented to you in a form of a dashboard. And I think I even illustrated that dashboard with some images in my September 21 webinar. So examiner might give you a dashboard where he might give you the results of the financial statements and the results have been converted into ratios. The results have been converted into trends or the results have been converted into graphical image or in a pie chart. Now you need to evaluate the results given to you or you need to interrogate the results given to you and you need to find what is the risk inside the results. So you need to interpret the results. So results will be given to you, right? You need to interpret the results. So how will the results come to you in a form of a dashboard? in a form of a dashboard, like graphical image, like a pie chart, like uh, already the ratios calculated for you. And you need to interpret the results into risk. So if the examiner, if, if the examiner used to ask analytical procedure, you used first to find the ratio, right? And then you used to interpret. Now, one step will be eliminated because you will already have the results. You just need to interpret the results into risk. So still you will get one mark for that as you used to get in the analytical procedure. So the marking scheme will remain the same. So be sure of the changes in D1 and D2 
already covered in my recent article on YouTube and in my September 20 webinar because they will have a significant impact in the upcoming September 21 exams. I, I do think so. Syllabus area G2, nothing to worry about till the time the examining teams write an article. So I think the December exam students should be more worried about the syllabus changes in G2 because the current issue article might come in the next couple of months. So that's, that's, that's what you need to focus on as a student. So syllabus changes, uh, your command on the computer based exams, using of the functionalities and all the other tips which has been guided to you by, by the tutor is, is very, very important for, for all of you. So if you have no further queries and no further questions, uh, I, sh I think I should be wrapping up the session now and I, I wish you all a very best of luck and success in your upcoming exams. Uh, and I believe every one of you will utilize these last 12 days in a very productive manner as guided to you or reinforced to you in my Facebook live session today. Okay, uh, just before wrapping up, uh, I just not want to miss out on the questions. Uh, so there is a, a, another list of questions uh, which needs to be answered uh, starting from Uh, Nadil, I cannot recommend any suggestions to you for SPR paper. You need to interact with an SPR tutor for that. I'm here for a triple A session, so I'm really, really sorry for that. Uh, Joe is asking, sir, if the financial data is presented in the form of a dashboard, means uh, we need not to find more. Uh, we need to find more risk since we had lost the five marks for calculating the analytical procedure. No, see, uh, Joyce, I was just telling the same. You will be given the results. You need to interpret the results into risk. So there were two steps of analytical procedures, right? One step of the analytical procedure was you calculate and then you interpret. Now examiner have given you the calculation already and you will interpret only. The marks will remain still one. In analytical procedure, you used to have one mark for a ratio, right? You calculate a ratio and you interpret the ratio. The marks will still remain one. You need to interpret the result. So even you are doing one thing less, examiner will still reward you with one mark. Okay, Rohit. Sir, can we write an opening statement saying that there is a risk of a technological bias based upon the data analytics? Uh, I think no, uh, Rohit. Uh, that would be too hypothetical assumption unless and until there is something in the case study uh, where you can pick up a risk of a technological bias. So I think uh, you need to focus on the case study, not, not giving it as an opening line or a standalone line when something is not against this in the case study. Okay, another question from Joyce. Sir, if the financial data is presented in the dashboard, okay, already answered that question, Joyce. So I think that was just uh, repeated again. Okay, so I think there is no further questions from anyone. I hope uh, all of your questions have been answered, right? I think there were loads of questions from Shagun, Nadil, uh, Chaudhary, there were loads of questions from Rohit. Uh, I think there is a question. Okay, Jazim, I've already answered your question. I think some students had loads of questions and I, I just remember your names, Jane, Joyce, Shagun, Chaudhary. Uh, I hope you got your answers to questions. Sebastian, uh, Azan, Hosai in the initial time had lots of questions, right? So I hope you had a productive Facebook live session uh, and your queries have been addressed and I hope you will rewatch it again if you missed it, missed a certain part, uh, part of it. So as a tutor, Kashif Kamran, I wish you a very best of luck for your upcoming September 21 exams for advanced audit and assurance. Uh, this is Kashif Kamran uh, with lots of best wishes to all of you signing off from this Facebook live session, the question and answer sessions for the upcoming September 21 exams. Have a nice day, study effectively, take care of yourself. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.